Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, this video is a rather difficult video to make because generally my rule is that if a product does not work as expected, then I just simply won't make a video on it. In fact, I have a ton of boxes which didn't make it into a video because they didn't work very well at all. So this video is not the video that I wanted to make, but I have to be real with you guys as I've always been in the past and demonstrate my experiences with this product. So let's start the video with my normal format, looking around the product, then going over the specifications and then moving on to how to get the software set up, then finally doing some testing on air in a real life demo. So firstly, this is the Rig Expert Phobos SDR, a brand new SDR receiver that the specifications say will receive from 100 kilohertz to 25 megahertz with direct sampling on the HF1 and HF2 ports. And then on the RF port, it will receive from 25 megahertz right up to six gigahertz using double conversion heterodyne. Now ADC resolution is 14 bit and it has a frequency stability of plus or minus 0.5 ppm. There are also some blocking dynamic range values and some selectivity values along with some IQ image rejection values all listed in the specifications. So the Phobos SDR has five SMA sockets, two of which are for the HF band, and these are labeled as HF1 and HF2. Then there's an RF SMA socket, which is for 25 megahertz and upwards, right up to six gigahertz. Now on the other side, we have two more SMA connections, and these are for a 10 megahertz high impedance input and a 10 megahertz 50 ohm, three volt peak to peak clock output, which actually could be quite useful. We also have this rather chunky USB 3 connector. Now I'm assuming this was used to cope with the power consumption and the data speeds required for the advertised real-time 50 megahertz bandwidth. Now actually, with a specially compiled version of SDR++, you can actually achieve 80 megahertz bandwidth in real time. And I'll show you that shortly later in the video. Now the whole case of the Phobos SDR appears to be aluminium. In fact, the whole thing in my eyes looks really good. It looks professional. It even has the laser etching for the logo, the product name, and also the ports. But does the build quality match the performance of the Phobos SDR? Okay, so let's take a look at the software that currently supports the Phobos SDR. Now there are Linux drivers available, but in this video I'll be using Windows. The driver for the Phobos SDR can be installed using Zardig, which is a little utility to install drivers for specific devices. Remember that the Phobos SDR must be plugged into a USB 3 port on your computer, and once plugged in, you can open the device manager to see if it's found. If you've not used the Phobos on Windows before, then you'll probably notice something like this within Device Manager. If so, run the Zardig application. Now, links for this will be in the video description or available from the Rig Expert website. Now, it's the same driver application that we use with the RTL SDR, for example. When the Zardig application is running, just select the Phobos SDR from the drop down list, ensure that Win at USB is selected here and then just press the install driver button. It may take a few minutes to install, but once installed, you should then see the Phobos SDR shown in the device manager like this. Now, as this is a fairly new device, software support is a little specialized. And what I mean by this is that you need to use a specifically built SDR package, which supports the Phobos SDR. The Rig Expert Files download page, which I'll link below, does have three available software packages, and that's HDSDR, SDR Sharp, and SDR++. Now, SDR++ has been compiled to support the Phobos SDR and support up to 80 megahertz of real-time bandwidth at the same time. Now, I'll be using SDR++ for this demonstration, so let's get started in seeing how well the Phobos SDR works. The antenna that I'll use for this demonstration will be a 70 foot long wire antenna up at around eight meters off the ground. Now this will be used for the HF bands, anything lower than 30 megahertz. For the FM broadcast band and upwards, I will use a tri-band collinear antenna, which is around 10 meters off the ground above the roof of my house. 
The first example I want to show you is this. To the left, we have the broadcast FM band, and that green segment we can see there is the air band, which predominantly hosts AM voice transmissions from aircraft. But wait, there are some signals that shouldn't be there, right? Let's take a listen. Kirsty McCall and New England, great lines in that. Especially, I put you on a pedestal, you put me on the pill. I absolutely love that. Mary in Sutton-on-Sea said... Now notice how the LNA and VGA sliders are all the way down to the minimum too. So I don't have the gain control set too high. What's also interesting is that if I change the bandwidth setting from 8 MHz up to 80 MHz, those mirror transmissions of the FM broadcast band appearing in the air band allocation starts to move around. With some bandwidth settings, they're not there, but with most, they are. Of course, there are a couple of solutions for this. I could insert a passband filter so that only frequencies within the air band are received to the input of the SDR. Or I could insert a band stop filter, which would null out all those FM broadcast stations from between 87 to 108 MHz. In fact, I did try this using a Nuelec FM broadcast band stop, and that did actually work. But for the price of this SDR that it's being sold at, this should not happen. This does not happen with SDRs that cost a quarter of the price that the Phobos SDR does. Even a cheap $30 USB dongle SDR performs better. Now let's take a look down on the HF bands. And again, I'm using my wire antenna, which at the moment it's not even resonant on any specific band. Using the Phobos STR, we're tuned to the 80 meter band with a bandwidth set to 8 megahertz. The LNA and VGA controls do not work on HF with the Phobos STR. And that's because there's no hardware attenuators or gain control. Now, while 80 meters looks okay, and any newcomer to the hobby would think so, there's actually a lot of transmissions here that should not be there. In fact, they're not really there at all. They are transmitting on an entirely different frequency. So let me use the same antenna, same software, same bandwidth setting, but change to a different SDR receiver by a different manufacturer. Now this other SDR does have attenuators and gain control, so we can make sure the front end of the receiver is not overloading and causing mirror signals. Again, for the price of the Phobos STR, I would not expect an STR that is a core of the price to outperform it. Okay, so let's try 40 meters, which is the 7 megahertz band. Again, same software, same antenna, same bandwidth setting of 8 megahertz, and a non-functioning LNA or VGA control. Here we can see that 40 meter band is just plagued with broadcast stations that should not be there. So again, let's swap to my other SDR receiver to see how well that performs. Well, as expected, it works perfectly with no mirror signals happening at all. Now I also tested the 20 meter band at 14 megahertz and also down on the medium wave bands and the results were exactly the same. Now while it did receive signals on all bands I tested, there were numerous mirror signals. Now, of course, I could have attempted to insert some attenuators or bandpass filters, but why should I with an SDR that costs this much? Now, there is a little light at the end of the tunnel, as with the testing performed on the VHF band where we saw mirror signals disappear. If you do the same on the HF bands and change the bandwidth, then things can improve. But with the lack of filters and attenuators on the HF band, I personally have zero confidence that what I'm actually listening to should even be at the frequency that's showing on screen. Now up on the microwave bands, it appears to work and I can easily pick up signals from my local Wi-Fi, either on 2.4 gigahertz or around 5.8 gigahertz. Cell phone towers around 900 megahertz is also clear to see. But obviously with these kind of signals, we cannot really decode these easily or legally. So it's hard to check if they're clean or if they are actually a mirror signal. Now this is a live recording with a bandwidth set to 25 megahertz. And this covers from 100 kilohertz up to 25 megahertz. Now I can't believe every signal shown there is actually a transmission. 
especially all of those to the far right where the higher bands tend to fall off at this time of night, which is actually around half past midnight. And this is 80 MHz bandwidth with a center frequency of around 700 MHz. Now this is obviously cell towers in my local area. Now the Phobos SDR is quite a mystery to me and performance on the HF band for me is pretty unusable because I don't have any confidence that what I'm actually seeing or listening to is actually there on that frequency. Another thing that I couldn't quite understand was why the top end of the HF ports cut off at 25 megahertz, essentially missing out on the 10 meter handband. So it would be no good for setting up as a web SDR if you want to use just one multiband HF antenna. I do feel that the Phobos SDR is more geared towards being used above 140 megahertz, assuming you have a wide bandwidth. But then of course you then introduce a lot more signals coming into the front end of the receiver and using a band pass or band stop filter would be a must alongside an attenuator. These are the kind of options that most general users of SDR receivers will not want to have to buy or even insert into the feed line. Now, there are many ways, many further tests that I could have performed for this video, but then the video would have been way longer. So if you want to see a specific test, I'll start to compile a list of tests to perform and then I'll include them in a future video. Also, if you brought one of these, do you see the same issues? Now I know of one other person that has the Phobos SDR and they, so far, do not see the same issues as I do. However, they are using simpler indoor antennas for both HF and VHF, so the tests are not really that identical. Now if I've missed some kind of fundamental setting or feature of the Phobos SDR that's going to magically make this work how I expected it to for the price, then please let me know down in the comments below. Obviously, I don't like making these kind of videos and this is generally why I don't make these kind of videos because I never like to make anything negative on my channel. However, as we're seeing a new product from a really reputable company, Rig Expert, who make absolute fantastic antenna analyzers, I would have expected a lot more. Now, for those wondering, I did test all of the supported SDR applications including USDR, which has native support for the Phobos SDR, and the results were the same on all software packages. I also reached out to Rig Expert to find out if I actually had a faulty Phobos SDR, but it was confirmed by them that my hardware was working as it should, and that I should ignore the mirror signals. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.